Part two includes the following lessons. Lesson one, being respectful. Lesson two, promoting participation. Lesson three, mainstreaming inclusion. <laughs> Lesson one, being respectful. Inclusive communication is all about respecting dignity and diversity. By including women and girls, men and boys, people who are from ethnic minorities, and people with different abilities. Inclusive communication is a great way to reduce stigma, stereotypes, and discrimination. You can destroy the myth and reveal the reality that people with disabilities are capable, unique, contributing members of society. The truth is, it's in to be inclusive. When people with disabilities are seen to be capable through radio, print, TV, or training, attitudes can change. Early childhood initiatives that include children with disabilities are an excellent opportunity to demonstrate that it's normal to be different. Barbara Kulaki, Communication for Development Specialist. Many people ask, what is meant by meaningful inclusion of children in communication, including children who are disabled? Well, the most important thing is for all of us to remember that we need to start at the earliest age possible. Children disabled and not form their attitudes in the earliest days and months and years of their life. So. If I am not seen in any communication, what kind of message does that give to me? Or if I am seen and portrayed in a negative way, what does that tell me about myself? And what does it tell other children? So what we have to do is find ways of having positive, inclusive communication about all children, including children with disabilities, from the earliest days possible. You can include persons with disabilities in all of your programs and communications without delay. Any and all communication that is developed can positively include children and adults with disabilities, both in the process of development and in the production itself. Children and adults with disabilities can be both the authors of their stories and the actors who perform those stories. Here are five ways to demonstrate your commitment to inclusive communication. One. Respect, rights, and dignity. This means choosing engaging, positive, and fully clothed images of children and adults with disabilities. If you're not sure about something, use a simple cringe factor check. If an image makes you cringe or squirm, or if you wouldn't like to be portrayed that way, it's probably not dignified. Humorous cartoons illustrate each point. Two. Focus on abilities when you choose your words, your stories, and your headlines. The longest part of the word disability is ability, so make sure abilities get noticed. Three. Celebrate diversity by showing we are all unique with different interests, backgrounds, and abilities. Avoid grouping terms like them, the blind, or the disabled, which makes it seem like all persons with disabilities are the same. Four. Promote engagement between children with and without disabilities. Children are naturally inquisitive. When you include children with disabilities in programs, communication, and resources, this helps demystify them for other children. Five. Use a twin track approach, considering both general communication and disability specific communication on any given topic. In this way, you can both make sure that general communication includes positive images of children and adults with disabilities and make sure that specific communication about disabilities is positive, accurate, and diverse. When it comes to etiquette around people with disabilities, it all comes down to using courtesy and common sense. For a second, think. How would you want others to act around your friends or family? You would want people to talk to them, not talk down to them. When you meet someone of a different ethnic background, you don't stare. You simply smile, introduce yourself, and say hello. It's no different when you meet people with disabilities. So instead of addressing your questions to an assistant or parent, be polite and patient and talk directly to people with disabilities. Here are a couple of more specific tips. To be more inclusive of children and adults with visual impairments, introduce yourself by name when you speak and say goodbye when you go so they are aware that you have left. Bye-bye. If you're giving a presentation, 
read out slides, and text, and describe pictures or charts as you speak, while trying to be specific with your language. And ideally, provide accessible formats of documents, such as an audio version. To be more inclusive of children and adults with hearing impairments, speak directly to them, not to their sign language interpreter. Some people may prefer to lip read, so try not to chew gum, turn away, cover your mouth, or eat while you talk. Just face the person and talk like you normally would. Karina Chupina, 32, Russia. My dream at the heart of hearing person of inclusion is when people don't think that person with the hearing loss equals dumb or stupid. When people are not surprised that I look at their face and ask them to speak clearly and slowly and be visible because I need to read lips. To be more inclusive of children and adults with intellectual impairments, use pictures, clear language rather than acronyms or jargon, and be patient and attentive. To be more inclusive of children and adults with physical impairments, hold your meetings and press conferences at accessible venues, where there is room to move around as well as accessible toilets. There is never a need to shout at someone with a disability, whether their impairment is to do with hearing or otherwise. Always ask if someone needs help before assuming they do, and if the answer is no, politely respect that. If you haven't understood something correctly, ask for clarification or repeat back what you did here to confirm. Natalia Turchan, student, Moldova. A young girl with a disability assembles letters on a whiteboard until they say, I understand everything. Starting today, please think about what you say. Let's get rid of negative labels, terms, and stereotypes. And instead, let's celebrate diversity by involving children and adults with disabilities in our communication. A music video from Uganda featuring children with and without disabilities. Lesson 2. Promoting Participation Promoting participation means respecting nothing about us without us, as more than just a slogan. It means featuring the voices of persons with disabilities in programs such as early intervention and communication for development. You can promote participation in many ways. For instance, you can give children with disabilities the chance to speak on radio, allowing their voices to reach a wide audience. Barbara Kulaki, Communication for Development Specialist. Now I have facilitated well over 30 workshops around the world for UNICEF in helping local people develop communication for, about, and with children. And in every one of those workshops, people with disabilities are included. And it's really interesting to note that some of the most popular and most liked pieces of communication, books for children, television spots, radio, have been those that have come from people with disabilities themselves. Wen Phong An, 17, Vietnam. She uses a wheelchair. Every Friday since I was eight years old, I would go to the radio station and report for the Voice of Vietnam. I enjoy doing it because it can reach people in the remote area and help them get updated with all the things happening. If you're developing a play, you have the chance to involve children with disabilities as generators of communication, as authors, designers, presenters, and actors. This adds diversity and richness. Chen Liu, 19, USA. She speaks in sign language. 
I love acting because I get to express myself in different ways, and it's beautiful. In terms of television, we should feature children with disabilities, both as actors and characters in stories. They will serve as role models for children both with and without disabilities, and remind everyone that disability is a normal part of life. A perspective from Laos, My Village, a children's cartoon. Claymation animals and children singing. My village is full of smiles. My village has everything. Social media is becoming more and more important in highlighting the abilities of children with disabilities. Check out these kids. They're talking about how they use social media to run successful campaigns. Tongai Dana, 24, Zimbabwe. We decided innovation to go into the community, educate the people, raise awareness on the rights of children with disabilities. We start up with a WhatsApp group to coordinate ourselves, come up with ideas how we do it. Nielekla Ashura Michael, 21, Kenya. She speaks in sign language. I started a Facebook page, and the Facebook page is called Dev w Women Forum Kenya. These people, especially other women with disability who joined, they could express themselves through this page. You have the capacity to change this world. You have the right time to change this world. And that time is now. If we present people with disabilities positively in communication materials, and if we invite people with disabilities to help craft those materials, we can start to affect real change. Lesson three, mainstreaming inclusion. Jared and Jenny, 23, USA. Jared has an intellectual disability. Hi, my name is Jared. And my name is Jenny and we're here to show you what inclusive leadership looks like. Inclusion means be brave with other people, people with disability. And people without disabilities. We give our thoughts to other each other. And we share our collective voice with others. You have a role and a responsibility to promote rights and inclusion. If you are featuring children, you can feature children with disabilities. This applies to all the topics you are working on. Across the board, create opportunities for children with disabilities to get involved in the development of programs, fundraising, and communication. A definition of inclusion from Montenegro. Jana and Eva, elementary school students. They are twins with physical impairments. A school fit for all children is actually a good definition of inclusion, but the one I gave our friend Sanko is also good. Inclusion means to offer your hand. All offices can take practical steps to make sure program communication includes and addresses people with disabilities explicitly and positively. UNICEF staff can also use positive role models to dispel myths, break barriers, and show possibilities but we should be careful about depicting persons with disabilities as brave, inspiring heroes. Likewise, we don't want to use approaches that elicit pity. Instead, we should show people with disabilities as successful people. It is important to feature positive engagement across all program areas. This book from Vietnam deals with a wide range of topics, such as child survival, child protection, basic education, and disability. Illustrations from the book featuring a child with a disability in various settings. An animation on disability and child protection from UNICEF. A child with a disability uses his crutches to hit the ball in a soccer game with his friends without disabilities. In text, UNICEF promotes changes in attitudes so all children can participate in all aspects of life. If you're hosting an international day or event, think about featuring disability as a theme. 
you can invite guest speakers who are experts in their field and also happen to have disabilities. To find those people, research the cross-sections between people with disabilities and your work. If you are creating any sort of communication, you can choose to highlight a sentence, statistic, or quote with a disability perspective. Through communication for development and program communication, children and adults with disabilities can also be indirectly portrayed. If you are communicating about health programs, show people with disabilities leading or participating in those programs. Use empowered images. Show parents with disabilities taking their children to be vaccinated or healthcare workers who happen to have disabilities. A perspective from the Pacific Islands, a boy speaks with his mother in sign language. You know, I went to school and the teacher was talking about HIV and AIDS. Can you tell me more about it? Sure, honey. I'm always happy to talk to you about anything. In child protection programs, use workshops, stories, and animations to remind people of the additional risks that children with disabilities may face. A perspective from Uganda, children with and without disabilities at a workshop. The workshop brought out difficult examples of violence in schools, both past and present. By the time I go back, I call, I inform my headmaster to call parents and inform them about what I have learned here. In humanitarian work, children and adults with disabilities should be involved in awareness programs and the development of materials. Use images and information about peace and conflict that include children both with and without disabilities. A perspective from Indonesia. Nonverbal communication for earthquake safety tips. A pantomime performed by students. Hello, I'm Deaf. I want to tell you about a disaster. A girl is eating breakfast when the room shakes. Earthquake! If an earthquake happens, don't run! Kids run around in a panic. A soccer referee shows them the red card. Drop and take cover under a table. The kids crouch down under a table. Through implicit messages, children with disabilities can be included across all topic areas without necessarily being the focus of the stories or topics. For example, UNICEF Laos has developed animations about water and sanitation aimed at children, which include characters with disabilities. A perspective from Laos, a cartoon featuring talking birds. One of the birds has a disability. Let's play Search for the Bacteria. Yeah! Awesome! Let's go, go, go! Have you found any yet? Where do bacteria live? Where are they? Here's one! Here it is! The bird with a disability finds the bacteria. If you're not sure where to start, just ask. Your local disabled persons organizations will likely have suggestions for how to work together. To promote rights and inclusion, you should use positive etiquette, language, and images of children and adults with disabilities. Respect diversity. Use role models. Use ideas generated by children and adults with disabilities. If you do all that, you promote people with disabilities as agents of change in their own lives. Kartik Sawney, 19, India. He is blind. We often simply associate people with disabilities as consumers of innovation. Well, we want assistive technology. We want this, we want that. But people with disabilities can actually very well be generators or producers of innovation as well. What is required, though, is an opportunity to innovate, an opportunity to experiment, an opportunity to pursue one's passions.